Hey guys, this is the review of uh, DNA structure for your section on molecular biology. So this is the uh, chapter 11, section 2. Uh, and basically we're going to talk about the structure of DNA in this first part. Uh, you recall from class that uh, DNA is, is called a double helix. So double helix. And that is because it is a ladder consisting of two strands that has this uh, helical nature about it, so it's a twisted ladder. And if you were to straighten out the helix, it would look just like a ladder. Okay, so that's it straightened out. This would be one strand of it, and this would be the second strand. Okay, so it's a double-stranded helix. We went over some of the characters that that uh, played a role in discovery of the DNA structure. This is Watson when he was younger, and this is Crick. This is sort of an iconic photo of them with their, their structure of DNA shown here and how they were modeling, how they thought about it. Um, what's, what's been come to, to seen about this structure of DNA is that a woman named Rosalind Franklin played a critical role in the discovery uh, of the structure of DNA. In fact, her data uh, was seen by Watson over here and, and led to the Watson and Crick discovery of the structure of DNA. And uh, unfortunately, she wasn't given credit on the Nobel Prize for her structure of DNA. She's since been recognized for her contribution, but uh, it's a little bit of a, a messed up situation where she wasn't originally given credit for that structure, even though it really led to uh, some of the most important data that, that led to that structure being identified. Of course, we talked about in class how uh, Watson, shown here in later years, uh, it became somewhat of a controversial figure in the news uh, due to his his racial remarks uh, about blacks and levels of intelligence. I'm going to put uh, a link to this story right here that kind of discusses the, some of the remarks that he made and why he had to resign from Cold Spring Harbor Labs. Uh, and you know, it's a lot of the things that he said, you know, kind of paint him to be a not so nice guy, you know, shown here. Uh, uh, you know, because of his racist remarks. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so when talking about the structure of DNA, you really can't have a discussion unless you're talking about uh, the nucleotide, okay? So the nucleotide is the monomer of DNA. So when we talk about DNA, we're talking about uh, nucleic, a nucleic acid, okay? So the nucleic acid is the polymer form and the nucleotide is the monomer that makes up this polymer. DNA is just one example of a nucleic acid we'll talk about later in these screencasts, RNA, which is also a nucleic acid uh, and, and some of its differences. But if you're looking at a nucleotide, there are three parts. Okay, these three parts that I want you to know are the sugar. And for DNA, we're talking about deoxyribose as the sugar. There is a phosphate and these two things together will make up what's called the sugar phosphate backbone. So when I say backbone I'm referring to the phosphate and the sugar. The third component of the nucleotide is the nitrogenous base uh, shown here as a double ring structure and we'll see in the next slide that there are different varieties of nitrogenous bases but for DNA you're going to be talking about A's, T's, G's, and C's. That's the short abbreviated version of these nitrogenous bases. So that's the third component. Okay, looking at nitrogenous bases in a little more detail, there are four uh, different kinds as we just said. These are the actual names of them. So T stands for thymine, C stands for cytosine, A stands for adenine, and uh, G stands for guanine. You can lump these bases into two broad categories, okay? Uh, the pyrimidines, which are these single ring structures. So you can see that here and here, so those are the pyrimidines. And also your purines, which are the double ring structures shown here and here. One of the things we talked about in class is a mnemonic device to help you identify pyrimidines versus purines, and if you look here, uh, if you look here in pyrimidine, you can see that there's a Y there. 
and there's also a Y in thymine and a Y in cytosine. So that's a nice little simple mnemonic device to help you remember them. Uh, you'll just have to kind of remember that pyrimidines are the single ring structures, whereas purines are the double ring structures. Another thing to note here, remember T always pairs with A in DNA, and C always pairs with G. So you're always getting a structure that's composed of, a, well, a, you know, a lat part of the ladder, the DNA ladder that's composed of a one ring structure and a double ring structure. So there's always a, a single ring and a double ring pairing, a single ring and a double ring pairing. Okay. Again, DNA is a double ring or a double stranded structure. And shown here in this picture is just one strand. Okay, so this is one strand. Again, shown here is that sugar phosphate backbone that's made up of uh, phosphates and sugars if you look down it. This G part here would be the nitrogenous base. So if you're looking at this picture here, you can make out a single nucleotide shown here phosphate, sugar, nitrogen base. You can do that for each of these individually. Phosphate, sugar, nitrogen containing base. Now the purpose of this slide is to talk about the different bonds that you see in DNA. Now if you notice, each of these nucleotides are connected. That's what makes up this backbone here. And if you look at this uh, nucleotide in particular right here, you can see that this phosphate right here is joined to this sugar and the nucleotide above it. So this, this point right here is where you're getting linking together of this nucleotide to this nucleotide. So I want to point out that this, this bond right here is covalent. Whoops. This bond right here is covalent and it's really strong, okay? So you're not gonna get a lot of instances where these bonds in the backbone are broken up, pretty, or not, they're not broken up easily. That's why it's called the backbone. It keeps uh, this strand intact together, okay? There's another bond that's found in a DNA molecule, so we'd have to draw out the second strand of the double-stranded uh, DNA molecule to show you this. So again, this is the sugar phosphate backbone for the other strand. Okay, and if I were to draw out the bases for this, I could illustrate the second bond that we're gonna talk about. So again, because that's a C in the other strand, this would be a G. Because that's a T in the other strand, this would be an A. Because that's an A, this would be a T. Okay, so we have the sugar phosphate backbone. We have our, our nitrogen containing bases here, here, and here. And there's some bonding going on between these nitrogen containing bases shown here, shown here, and shown here. Okay, uh, this is the bond that keeps the two strands together. So uh, unlike the, the bond over here that keeps the backbone together, these bonds right here keep strand one and strand two together. Okay, so let me draw this another way. If we're looking at a C here in this strand and a G here, and a T here and an A here, the strand is going to be occurring between this C and this G and this T and this A. For C's and G's, you find three of these bonds, and for T and A, you find two of the bonds. The bonds that I'm talking about are called hydrogen bonds, Oops, this thing keeps messing up on me. They're called hydrogen bonds, and they are a lot weaker than covalent. So covalent are much stronger than hydrogen bonds. So I want you to think of weak bonds, uh, weak bonds when you think of hydrogen bonds. And that is so that you can actually separate these two strands in instances like DNA replication, which we'll get to in the next section, okay? So just keep that in mind that there's different strengths of bonds that are holding DNA molecules together. 
And actually, that's all we have for this screencast. So uh, for this one, we covered the structure of DNA. I really want you to understand the, the structure of the nucleotide, the three components shown here. I want you to understand the differences between the, the various nitrogen-containing bases and how they all come together to make this double-stranded DNA molecule. Okay, in the next section, we'll talk about DNA replication.